What's up, Slackers? Welcome back to another episode of the Slackcast. I am... He looks so defeated. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sitting there with his head down as you start. <laughs> I'm Pete and Betsy here with my ever-present co-host and antagonist, Andy Brown. And the lovely Thompson over here. Oh, wow. I'm upgraded. Yeah. It's a lovely... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying out a bunch of different nicknames until I find ones that feel comfortable. For you, it's just my co-host and antagonist. That's just you, man. Yeah. By the time you see this episode, the last episode might finally be published. Yeah, please. It's been a, it's been a, a fun week for the yeah. Slackcast. So we had to record late because Andy was sick. Then we exported it, and it was just about to go up, and it fucking failed because I'm an idiot, and I fucked up one of the files. So, it's good stuff. So, yeah, I mean, you probably saw the last episode of the Slackcast about two days ago. So, uh... From this one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, what have you been playing these last two days? <laughs> right? But, oh, it's been a week since we've sat down to do it, though. Oh, no, it's been like three days. It's been it? three... Yeah. It's, uh, Three days. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Friday now. Oh, my God. On Monday. All right, cool, right. you're right. Okay, so, uh, that being... Said, um, if you if this is your first time, I'm sorry this is a meandering intro, but this is the Slack ass where some subsection of the Slack and Slash gang gets together to talk about video games, the news, and how they make us feel. So, um, we're going to start by talking about what we've been playing the last two or three days. So, um, I think the highlights for me have been Oxenfree, which is, uh, if you're not familiar with it, is like a story-driven... Um, it's really good. Um, I kind of want to play it for October since it's got like a spooky kind of vibe. Um... But it's like a story-driven, like, choice narrative kind of game. There's, like, a story of a bunch of teenagers on an island, and you, like, play this, uh... Um, like Lord of the Flies. That's great. No, no, nothing like that. Uh, it's more like, it's more like, uh... It's yeah, more like Street Stamp Bunch, isn't it? Like, uh, three? Uh, f- well, three in the first ten minutes that you played. Yeah. It's five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting, though. It's, it's cool. It's like, you play, like, a teenage girl. She's, like, I think they're juniors... And it's like girls oh, in video games. Gross. More likely than you think. Um, and you play <laughs> her. And it's like with her best friend, and then her like brand new stepbrother and stuff. You're like going to do this like thing that these teenagers do every like, like I guess it's like supposed to be October or whatever. And you go to this like supposedly haunted cave and right. stuff, and there ends up being like some real supernatural shit going on. So it's cool. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's supposed to be October, but they can't call it that because they didn't get the rights to yes. the month of October. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, I I played, I'm thinking about four hours in, I think it's only supposed to be like five hours or something, so I think I'm like right at the end, I was playing it right before you guys came over, so I'm going to fin- finish that up as soon as we're done here. Uh, beyond that, all the usual stuff, we always say Overwatch, League, fucking Pokemon, um, we had a particularly interesting bout of League of Legends the other night. We were teaching Spaz how to play League of Legends, if you've seen any of the videos with Spaz, you'll know that he's an idiot. <laughs> and doesn't play PC games. No. So it's a perfect yeah. storm. Um, of... Shout out to Brian Spaz's league namesake. Brian, <laughs> yeah. And Ever present <laughs> troll Anthony Spaz Curran names his league account Brian Sucks at Games. Oh <laughs> <laughs> but the best part, best part. Best part is if you try and type out Brian Sucks at Games, it doesn't fit in the summoner name thing. It's best like, how do I do it? Should I just make it Brian Sucks at Game? <laughs> and uh, so we were like, no, you can just do, you know, sucks with an X. And he was like, yeah, that works. So he types it out, and he does sucks with an X, and then still puts an S on the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my it's, God. so it's Brian sucks at games. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds... Well, that's perfect. Perfect. Oh, wow. That perfect. defines him. Um, <laughs> but to his credit, yeah. uh, he is doing okay. He's, he's learning. He's getting there. Yeah. He, I mean, like, when he was playing with us, he was playing with other 30s. Okay. He was able to actually, like, affect uh, positive change in the game right. and not feed a lot. Right. So, well, yeah, he cool. didn't feed a lot. He uh, His first game, he had some dope ash ulties. Yeah, oh my god, he like nice. figured out like how to use it as an engage, right. so he would basically just like shoot it into a team fight, and then me, Andy, and Ozzy would just go kill everybody. Nice. <laughs> also, oh, and Brian, yeah. and Brian, um, Brian sucks his in that game. <laughs> Brian we, sucks his that game. We, as a group, queued up against another group of four level thirties and a newish player, and as someone who got laned against the newish player, I found a perfect metaphor for white privilege in video games. This is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> Alright, lay it on being, me. <laughs> being level 30 and blind picking Teemo <clears throat> into a level 15 Garen is what my privilege feels like. <laughs> there's no, there's <laughs> like, there's not a lot of hard counters in League. <laughs> but, but it's just like, 
Timo kind of ruins Garen's day. Right. <laughs> so, like, uh, that guy didn't know how to play. And he got first, he got like, first blood in, like, two minutes. Yeah. I just feel bad. Like, I feel bad. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a it was, Shame. it was a hell of a game. Hell, hell of a night. Yeah, I went like thirty five. <laughs> Holy shit! I think. Oh yeah, no, you literally went thirty. He literally got thirty five wow. kills. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, it was yeah. the highest kill count. He's just like, Ooh, I'm Timo doing dumb shit. The because the, Garen hyperfed. The most crazy thing about that specific match to me was that like. Not only did you get 35 kills, like, most of us got, like, a lot of kills. Yeah. So it was, like, a really high kill game. Right. It's like, they never forfeit. Like, they, wow. they never gave up. That's cool. It was, it was... You know, gotta give them some credit. Yeah, they, I mean, they were in it for a I while. I mean, their but... bot lane did real well. Yeah. I mean... Because, like, you know, Spaz was new, but... Yeah. That game was fun. Their ADC got fed real... Oh, my God, no. Their ADC... They had Teemo as an ADC, and then they had fucking... No, they had Teemo mid, didn't they? No. Oh. That was the game where oh, it was, that was the Teemo... Game of Teemo ADC? And then what was... Um, what's his name? The guy who charges. Um, oh, Scion. And Scion wow. as the support. And I was like, what is this lane? And Spaz was just getting so frustrated. I was like, dude, I promise this isn't normal. <laughs> it's not normal. And they're doing really well. Like, yeah. Their, yeah. their Scion support had seven kills. Jeez. Like, by, like, the middle of the game. And That's Spaz, surprising. who is, like, level eight, so he doesn't have access to all the summoner spells. It's yeah. like Scion ulted. He's like, I used my heal and my ghost. How is he still <laughs> faster than me? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't help but feel bad for the guy. Yeah. Um, so you been playing anything else? Uh, yeah, I played like nine hours of Civilization last night. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Because... Shout out to Chris Cox. Shout outs to Chris Cox. <laughs> Chris was like, want to play Civ? I was like, sure. We started at 8 at 1 o'clock in the morning. He's like, fuck! Yeah, dude, it was I so guess that's actually five hours, but... Oh, I, did that, I used to do it all the time, you know... When we when I was playing with like uh, with him and like Ozzy and oh yeah when you when you play Civ you start a game early yeah. and don't realize how late it gets and things I can go for a couple more turns yeah and, and then it's like two hours later dude it's just so funny because I remember when you came over you're like yeah I started playing with Chris at like eight and I was like eight I logged on to play Oxen Free at one in the morning last yep. night and nice. you were still playing so fast. Nice. And then didn't you say after that you played some Overwatch and then like a couple and games then of league? a couple games of League I was playing video games till four in the morning fuck yeah man bad looks for me at work today. I'm so tired. So yeah, now you're like a zombie. <laughs> Games. Games. What about you, Thompson? What are you playing? Uh, in the last three days, I recently restarted Prison Architect because why the hell not? Because I wanted to build prisons. I mean, I, I beat the shit out of that game already, so I was like, you know, just like, let me revisit it, right? Um, I was like, let me just see how, how bad of a prison I can make. Uh, they added an, uh, an up, like a few updates since the last time I played, and you can get rid of the minimum size requirements for cells. Oh so now God. every single cell is one tile without a toilet or anything, and people just sit in a box. Oh my and God. if you do anything in my prison, you get 24 hours solitary confinement. Everything's solitary, though! So I have What's to, even the listen, difference? No, no, because, like, I don't know, it's like, you, at least you, if you're not in solitary, you can, like, walk around the prison when there's free time. Okay. And you can work if you but want. Like, you have to sleep in a robot closet. Yeah, so. there's a bed somewhere. <laughs> you know, they can go... Whatever. Point is... I have over 200 people right now, and I actually have uh, 250 solitary cells because how many people commit bullshit in my prison? And people get, like, locked up for, like, finding a weapon, stabbing somebody and something else all at once, and it's, like, basically instantly 80 hours solitary confinement. Jesus Good Christ. Good shit. I'm having fun with that. <laughs> I'm making money, so it's like, whatever. Tom's I'm winning. a monster in yeah, everything whatever. that's wrong with America. It's a super <laughs> massive prison that makes money. Super jail? Yeah, it's pretty much super jail. That's what I'm working on. So, yeah. That's been God, fun. what's next? Are you going to make Squidbillies jail? <laughs> <laughs> God, no. Metalocalypse jail. I mean, no, Other Adult Swim reference. <laughs> it's pretty close to Metalocalypse style jail. Like, I, I don't fucking fix them when they get injured either. There's no doctors. So, God. I mean, it's, it's pretty brutal. Reasons Ooh. Thompson should never be put in charge of Doctor Doom. <laughs> I love that Doctor Doom has that one panel that he's, it just says clearly... The answer is simple, and then the next thing he's slamming the table, you must give doom all your countries! Because seriously, that's that's perfect right now. Yeah. Okay, then. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. I guess that means it's time for... The news! The news! We're talking about the news! The news! The news! We're talking about the news! What's up? Okay. Yeah, that was good. We're getting really good. better. All right, so item number one on the news this week is a wrap-up from last week, where we forgot some stuff. So, uh, we got second stage evolutions of Pokemon, uh, 
excuse me, we got the second stage evolutions of the starter Pokemon from Pokemon Sun and Moon. Their names are Dartix, who is the grass type, Torcat, who is the fire type, and Brion, who is the water type. Um, we're going to include the video where you can check them out for yourself. Um, I'm still real hype on that grass starter, which is something nice. that I like, have never really done. I'm really disappointed that I'm not more interested in the water starter, but at the same time... You like, don't like pretty oh. seal? I, it's just like, I don't like a clown seal. It's, it's <laughs> lame. Yeah, I'm like, not a fan of it, really. Like, it's, I'm it's whatever. I'm hoping it's going to be a fairy type so that it'll be competitively viable in some way. But otherwise, like I'm really not interested in it. I think that's the typing from the leak that these all but confirm. Yeah, where it's like um, f the fire one turns into Tiger Millionaire, and <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah. the thing, though, man. If they have another fire fighting, though, it's like no, it's it's uh, fire dark. Oh, okay, but it's cool. it's wrestling themed. All right, I'm into that. But it's fire dark. Okay, I could I could and that. Uh, and then like isn't the Rowlet evolves into Rodimarcher, like right? Yeah. yeah. And Poplio evolves into a pretty lady. <laughs> a pretty lady seal. Yeah, who's still like a circus clown. All right, well, we'll see, I guess, right? I'm, I'm interested because like, yeah. I remember seeing those leaks a while back and it's like, it does seem like they're kind of the case now, but... I wonder, just because, like, there's, like, some pretty... Like, they give the Pokedex entries for these guys out and, like, describe their personalities, like, in pretty deep detail, which is something that they don't usually do with Pokemon. Right. And, um, I don't know. They just seem, like, kind of weird to, like, be matched up with those final well, evolutions. The types, Not the types, but, like... Yeah, but, like, the, the physical look of the final evolutions that we may have seen. Right. I don't know. Okay. okay. I'm not wholly convinced there. But, um, they're cool. I'm really, really into Dardix. Like, I'm really excited to get that grass type, so. Um, I'm super into those. I'm not super into the Ash Greninja. Yeah, that's the yeah, other bit kind of that dumb. came from there. It's, uh, there's gonna be a demo starting on October 18th, which means you can get it in a couple days by the time this is published. Um, and, uh, you're gonna be able to get Ash Greninja, which is just a Greninja that has an ability that allows it to turn into, like, this alternate form of Greninja from the anime. <laughs> Apparently, it seems like Ash is gonna make, yeah, it seems like you're real excited about it. Yeah, no, I, that was not a, like, a rudeness thing. It's just, not a facetious <laughs> yawn. I am so tired. It's yeah, okay, buddy. I feel it's okay. Like, it's okay. It's okay. I may be... fall asleep on the cast if I do, I apologize. It's okay, it's gonna, it's gonna be a short episode. I'll, okay. I'll read all the news. Man, I got, like, two hours last night, I get it. Um, so basically, it's, like, we're not totally clear on what Ash Greninja is gonna actually accomplish. It seems like it's gonna get a boost in stats or something but it just seems like it's more than anything going to be a nod to the anime. I really, really hope that this whole thing of, like, Pokemon taking on aspects from their trainers is it's not dumb. a thing that becomes, like, canon, because it's fucking really dumb. It is. Um, but given the fact that we've seen some of the stuff with, like, the Ultra Beasts and it seems like human-Pokemon fusion, like, might be on the table at some capacity, I'm kind of concerned. Like, if I can have my Pokemon styled like me, wear a hat and stuff, yeah, that'd be cool. And not grow my same haircut, though. Yeah, that's like, that's shit like that is just dumb. Yeah. It's, it's very weird that they're able to do that. Um, I'm not yeah. into it. Yeah, also, it's leave that shit to Dig Digimon Pokemon. Yeah. I was reading somewhere that um, the way that Ash Greninja is, like, becomes Ash Greninja, that's to basic, kill. basically kills competitive Greninja. Because it's I off its ability, and so it won't have Protean anymore? Well, it doesn't kill competitive Greninja, because like, oh. that still exists. Yeah, it's but just like, like, if that's the only way to get a Greninja in this gen, yeah, it's like, it makes competitive Greninja a whole lot harder. Yeah, so that's the thing, like, you should be able to breed that Ash Greninja to make new Frokies and get one with Protean. Okay. That should work, theoretically. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it, it would it would do that. But, I, you know, that shouldn't be a problem. <clears throat> but uh, I know, like, for the first set of, like, VGC and everything, they're making it that you can only use Pokemon that you get in Sun and Moon. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you can't breed it to get the Dream Move and get Protean, then that would be a problem, at yeah. least for, like, this first year of competition, which would be weird. So, yeah. Well, we'll anyway, see. Anyway, we talked about Overwatch last week, and we're like, oh, there's an update coming for Halloween, but, like, they haven't released details. Yeah. And, like, 12 hours later, there were details, so we looked like assholes in a podcast <laughs> that's still not out. Yeah, like even more like assholes. That's great. Yeah, um, it's cool. I literally like put a visual thing on that where I was yeah. like, "Hey, we're dicks. This is old news now, but that's how it goes sometimes." So the Overwatch Halloween update is live. It goes until November first. There's twelve uh, limited release skins. A bunch of them are just like zombie recolors. Some of them are fucking awesome. Some of them are really cool. There's um, Pumpkinhead Reaper. It's like a headless horseman. There's 
which uh, which, which mercy, mercy, which the internet's going crazy for because they're disgusting. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, and then Doctor yeah. Drunkenstein and Doctor Drunkenstein's monster, which yeah. are you know Frankenstein and Frankenstein's monster skins for Drunk Rat and Roadhog. There's the PVE brawl that's really hard, uh, Drunk and Signs Revenge. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. It's like a co-op mode where like you have to do like wave clear, basically, of yeah, like, it's like zombie robots, and then it's you know, any like, co-op sh- horde mode from a shooter, except yeah. you're locked into being Anna, Hanzo, uh, Soldier 76, and McCree, which is like a weird team comp. And it can only be those four. It can time. only be those four, and it has to be, you know, four of them. And then like... As you clear waves, you have to fight, like, a Reaper and, like, uh, a Roadhog and a Drunk. Right? Yeah, so... It's it's really cool. It's it's a lot of fun. Like, we just... I just played it with Andy for the first time while we were waiting for Thompson to get over here. And uh, I'm really... Shit's eager. fucking hard. Yeah, it's really hard. I'm really eager to, like, try to get a whole team together and, like, just, like, do it and make a video about it. Because, like, it's fun as fuck. It's really just silly um, and, like, campy and goofy, but really challenging. Um, my most anticipated delay of 2016 got delayed to mid-2017. <laughs> Cuphead is not coming out until next year because they wanted to get the full vision for their game rather than reduce the scope to put it out this year. Right. Uh, by now, our like feelings on delays are well documented. Yeah, you can check out our delays can't, podcast. Can't wait for Cuphead. Uh, we'll put a video to the blog post where they say all this stuff. It's coming to Xbox One, Windows 10, and Steam in mid-2017. We'll put a link. A link. Did I say what did you I You said we'll put a video. We'll put a video there! Well, yeah. Please. So, yeah, there's there's like a very short blog post that we'll link that you guys can read, but that's basically the long and short of it. They just apologize and say that they want a little bit more time to kind of deliver on their vision, and I think this is one of those scenarios where, based on what we originally saw and then what we've seen subsequently, I'm kind of glad they're taking a little bit more time because the platforming and stuff seems like it has a lot of a lot of room for improvement, whereas the boss battles still look awesome. So yeah. they need a couple more months to kind of bring that together. Find my book. Yep. Same with Friday the Thirteenth. Got delayed to add uh, single player and AI bots. Yep. So they have like a huge Kickstarter yeah. post that we've linked to as well that you can go and check out more information there. Um, that's a long yeah. short of it though. You know, it's, it's like, just like they're adding a huge feature that takes time. Yeah, and like two sets of features and like stuff that the people were asking for. So. It's one of those things where it's like, this is definitely a good delay. You're going to get a better end result for it. And we're really excited about both of these games. So as I'm much as I'm disappointed to kind of like have to wait for them a little bit, it yeah. seems like it's going to be for good reason. And so, um, next up, we've got a pretty significant block of uh, League of Legends news. Uh, starting off with, um, there's like a ton of new updates coming to the game with the new season, as there always are. We're going to highlight one specifically that we got a lot of information about, which is plants. Um... So, Ryder Fearless posted a, like, uh, post on, like, the League of Legends boards, kind of giving a longer explanation about what plants are and what they do, which we'll link to, you can check out. Um, but we're just going to kind of give you the, um, you know, the broad strokes. He said that they're, quote, uh, plants are small, single-use neutral objects that activate when attacked by a champion. They spawn in semi-random locations in the jungle, similar to Bard's Chimes, and respawn after a window of regrow- regrowth. Uh, we saw three of them. It's not clear if there's going to be more, but there is the Blast Cone, which um, kind of just like blows nearby units away, Honey Fruit, which heals you, and then Sir uh, Scryer's, Scryer's Bloom, which gives a, a, a vision. So, yeah. So. That's cool. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting how, how they kind of like affect the way that the jungle flows, and it's going to be really interesting how that's, they affect like fights. Yeah, that's part of a, a much wider subset of like they're doing a lot of stuff for the jungle this offseason. And. I, this isn't written down, but it just got announced today, and I want to talk about it. They're putting sandbox practice mode in. Yes. Which I'm really excited for, because Dota's had that forever. League players have been asking for it forever, and they did, like, a super condescending thing about it last year, where they were like, we don't want this, because then these will, you know, increase toxicity when you play bad. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, yeah. You know, we don't want your teammates to be able to be like, go play in practice mode, asshole. That's funny. <laughs> we think that you should get better at playing League of Legends by playing League of Legends. And it's like, yes, but when I want to get down, like, you know, how far away from a wall I can be before flashing, I'd rather be able to just, you know, kick open sandbox mode. Yeah. It's going to be a nice addition. Yeah. It uh, lets you reset all your cooldowns, infinite gold, lock your level, and adjust, like, minion waves so you can be like, okay, here's how I fr- freeze a wave here, like, here's cool, what cool. I can do with this. It's really good. I'm that really excited good. for that. Yeah, yeah I am, that is going to be really cool. It's going to be like, a really nice way to, like, test out a new champion when you get it, so you don't yeah, have just to, like, like drag play. your friends down for three games while you learn how to play. Yeah. Like, fire up a custom or something. Yeah. 
Oh, and and then um, world moves on. North America does not. Yeah, unfortunately, C nine has been eliminated from Worlds, and oh man, we're gonna lose. Or the Koreans are gonna win World. <laughs> Koreans are gonna win Worlds again. Who knew? What right. A shot. Uh, Koreans yeah. are great at esports. Not surprising, but disappointing. I you know I always really hold out that North America will finally fucking. Make it at North least. American teams like aren't good. I know, I know. We're we're not good. We're consistently underdogs in a game that we created. Yes, yeah. it's, it's pretty hilarious. It's usually the case. It's the sad thing though. It's like I really would love to see like a North American team like take it back for America. And it's like not gonna happen. So oh well. Yeah. Well. It's always next year, guys. We'll do it. There's five of us. Um. We, yeah. Right. One day. Uh, <laughs> yes. Best players league now. So. We got a whole team. So I'm saying it's five of us. Let's start. He, he only plays ADC, though. It's always Ash. Ban Ash, and he's fucked. No, it's fine. He can main, main ADC. I'll main sub. You main fucking mid. Thompson. I don't know if Thompson can play mid. I'll play top. You just took my two things. <laughs> like, you just gave them away. What is this? You can be juggler? Unless, no. unless no. the opportunity to play Malzahar shows up. All right, fine. Fight everyone. I'll top. You sub. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. There's a new Pokemon trailer out. And it's just like, I can't believe that they're still putting out trailers. Like, I was so convinced the last one was the mm-hmm. last trailer, and then they're just like, There's nah, so here's some stuff. more shit. More crap. So, we saw more evolutions for some of the Pokemon that they've already shown us. Like, uh, Type Null has a new evolution that can change its type based on what item it's holding. Kind of like Arceus, which is, like, pretty cool. Um, it seems like, it's like, a lore thing is that, like, it breaks off its mask when it finds a tra- trainer that it really, like, trusts or whatever, and it turns into this, like, pretty crazy fucking... I don't know, like, pseudo-legendary. Yeah. Looks cool. Um, that, like, dragon type that we saw a while back evolves into a dragon fighting type. We got, uh, we saw Lolan Muck and Grimer, who basically just look like they're, like, made of party trash. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, got a dark type added to it, which is pretty cool. Adds some new resistances and some new weaknesses, so that's pretty interesting. And, uh, we also saw new kahunas, a new trial captain, so it's a ton of stuff. We're gonna link to the trailer. Go check it out. And Caesar is in Pocket Tournament Arcade. Just like the Darkrai thing yeah, that happened. So like people are playing Pocket still, I think. Oh yeah, I mean it still has it still has a definitely dedicated audience. Um, there it, it did like pretty well, I think, at Evo in terms of like turnout. So I think people are definitely into yeah. it. But that's only for like the Japanese arcades. So it's like we still haven't gotten Darkrai here yet. So I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna get it. That game like sales wise flopped pretty hard here, didn't it? Well, I mean, it, I mean compared to. Most games. Most games because it's on the Wii U. Right. It's a, you yeah. know, dumpster fire of a console. <laughs> right. Oh, but it, it, did good, do, like it did do well as far as Wii U games go. Okay. So I think, like, we'll probably see that stuff as DLC here. Because, like, I know that apparently in that same release where they kind of data mine the information, they're like, Dark Rise, Scizor, and Empoleon are in the data for Pocket. Like, it seems like Empoleon's going to come out pretty soon, and then we'll probably get, like, a DLC pack with all three of them or something, I would imagine. That'd be cool. So, or maybe they re release it on NX. I can see that. Can see it. Can see it. I'm hype. All right. So, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So, next bit of news is Xbox One sales beat out the PS4 for the third month in a row, which is something I never thought I'd be reporting. Never thought I'd see it. Uh, people are waiting for the slim. I think so. Yeah. People yeah. are waiting for the slim. People are waiting for. I mean, maybe some people are waiting for Pro. PS4 Pro. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, just like Xbox had its big push now. Because they know they're going to lose when PS4 rolls out around Black Friday. So. Totally. Also, like, Xbox One S came out, reviewed really well, and then, like, Sony had a couple really bad weeks in the press, so, like... Yeah. I, Xbox week after is... after week, man. They yeah, just so, like, really, X, like, fucked it up. It's, it's, it's good. Xbox getting some gains here. Good for them. Let's not just say Sony had a couple really bad weeks and not just, like, Sony did some really dumb shit. Oh, I mean, like, come on, that's yeah. well documented on this show, too. Go, we had a yeah. whole fucking, like, Sony fucked up the podcast. And then also, like, the fucking... Had only three weeks in a row. Yeah, we did the reactions to the yeah. fucking... Oh, my God, that, that PlayStation meeting was just abysmal. Sony so, had some bad weeks in the press, I want to say. Just made it seem like Sony's being treated unfairly. No, no. <laughs> Sony had some, like, hey, remember 2008 yeah. Sony when we were, like, fucking literally driving the PS3 into a brick wall? They had, like, that for a month. Yeah. And But, like, you know, they're going to... Obviously, I think they're going to come back. But they'll bounce back. Yeah, they always do. But what if they don't? Oh, they will. That would be insane. They're fine. Um, But... 
The Sony Dreamcast comes out next month, guys. <laughs> Segways, this is a positive spin on the, the Sony stuff, though, lately. is uh, Sony VR is already being sold at a profit, according to um, Sean Layden, who's the president of Sony Inter Interactive Entertainment. Uh, he told Polygon in an interview, quote, we're making money on the VR console. He didn't speculate, or not, excuse me, he didn't speculate. He didn't um, elaborate too much further than that, but... Apparently, VR, Sony VR is being sold at a profit. I know um, from interviews that I've you know seen with like Shuei Yoshida when they talked about it, they had like really really low projections for it in terms of like its first year on the market. Right. So seems like it's doing well for them so far. So um, uh, that segues into our meat and potatoes of the week, which is Sony VR or VR in general first impressions. Uh, we got Sony VR or PSVR rather uh, yesterday. Um, at the time of this recording. So by the time this goes up, we should have the unboxing and at least our first Let's Play up as well. Uh, so we've each kind of spent like at least an hour or two playing some VR games. So we just kind of wanted to give our first impressions about it before we have like a full review for you guys in another week or so. Um, so I did, I'm going to preface this with what I played. I played a little bit of the, uh, the VR worlds. I did the, played some Danger Ball, did the like, Ocean Depths one. Right. And... The heist, right? Like, the, the tutorial for the heist, which okay. consists literally of, like, pick up a gun, fire the gun. Right. You should be using the move controllers for this. Um, oh, you didn't use the move controllers for that? No, I didn't. Oh. I just used the regular controllers. I had them! Why didn't you I use didn't, them? Because I was in the VR, man. Oh, okay. That's yeah. fair. And then I played some Eve Valkyrie. The, the Ocean Depths one was, like, unsettlingly real. Yeah. I remember you were um, like you were like into it. I got spooked. We like went to go grab a burrito and like we came back and Andy was just like Sharks yeah. man, like that <laughs> yeah. was crazy. Yeah. That was crazy. <clears throat> yeah, that was real real like just it messed me a little bit. Like Danger Ball's fun and I didn't do enough of the heist to you know, have an impression of it, but Eve Valkyrie made me carsick. I remember um, we were talking about Danger Ball, and I remember you said you were like getting really into it because it was like it gets really like it ramps in difficulty really quickly, really fast. Yeah, you said you were like getting like spaz, you're just like yelling at the computer and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So the Danger Ball is a ton of fun, yeah, man. It. Yeah, that that one, um, that let's play should be up by now already, and like I I played that one with Spaz and. Uh, uh, it's just it's just pong, but it's so fucking fun. Yeah, and I just remember like that was the first thing we played, and it felt like it feels like weirdly appropriate that like you know it's like oh this is like a new kind of like thing in gaming and like it's here's so pong. Cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know it's like it's pretty cool. Yeah, right. It's, like, I, I, it's poetic. Yeah, that's exactly what I was right. gonna say. Yeah, very poetic. I think. Nice. And it's fun as hell. It's just like it makes an old experience feel fresh again. Oh, yeah. You know? And that's I think what is really exciting about VR and um, what I liked about E Valkyrie as well. But, yes, yeah, so you said that made you feel sick? Yeah. Like, in general, or...? Uh, just, like, I just got a little bit of motion sickness from it. Yeah. Of, like, the, you know, perception of moving from my eyes not meshing with my perception of sitting on a couch from my body. Right, yeah. I definitely, um, I experienced that a little bit. I, so I'll throw out the games that I've played already, so I also played Danger Ball. I played, um, oh my god, can you please move my jacket real quick? I need to read it off the back of this box. What is it? Uh, the Odyssey. What's that say? Scavengers Odyssey. Scavengers Odyssey. That's the other game we tried to Let's Play for. That's when we were in like a mech kind of thing. Okay. And it's really cool because you aim the gun with your head. Whoa. You didn't tell me there was a mech game. Yeah, dude. It's awesome. You did not... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll play it. We'll play it. Um, but the other thing that's really cool about it is you hold L2 and you have to like aim with your head where you want to jump. And then, like, that's kind of, like, their solution for, like, you know, locomotion a little bit. Because, like, you move with the thing, like, with your stick, um, but, like, you also have to, like, be platforming, right? But you're not just, like, jumping. You're kind of, like, launching yourself to these craters and asteroids and stuff. And it was really, really awesome and, like, gave me that, like, kind of, like, whoa, you know, nice. kind of feeling. But I started getting motion sick after a while. Like, you actually can see in the Let's Play, there's a point where, like, I'm, like, I feel like I kind of need to sit down. Like, this is, like, it's a little bit, like, weird. Like, I feel yeah. off, you know? Um, and I think that's, like, a thing that we'll probably get used to the more we, like, interact with VR and our body gets used to, like, what it's like to be there. But I also, like, wonder, I remember, like, all of us had some kind of thing that was, like, ailing us, you know? Where it's, like, Spaz and I had both not eaten when we started playing VR, and we had been playing for hours and not, yeah. not eating, 
and I had only slept for a few hours. I remember, like, I think you were in the similar boat where you didn't sleep much. I was like, yeah, I had you had just come off work, like dehydrated as hell. Right. So I feel like all of those factors probably, like, in some way contributed to us feeling sick. But I wonder. You know, I wonder, like, yeah. how, how are we going to feel, like, a month out when we've been doing VR for, like, you know, you've banked, like, a couple hours in it, and it's, like, a little more familiar. Because I do know, like, we were talking about adjusting the headset and everything, yeah. and how that got easier every <clears throat> single time. Um, it did for me, too, yeah. But, yeah, so, Thompson, um, why don't you tell what, tell the guys what you've played so far, or tell the, the viewers what you've played so far? Evalbury is the only thing I actually got to play. Um, but I think it probably put like over two hours in, a little over. Cause, yeah, like, you, you were playing online and everything. Uh, I played like five rounds online, and just to get to play online, you need to do like three training missions and then five story missions. So yeah, I remember maybe, you were like trying to get it set up so we could do a let's play. Yeah, whatever. And then we, had, we ended up having to like call it because I, I was I, asleep and you had to like, go home. Dude, I really enjoyed it though. Like that was really fun. Um, flying a spaceship is like definitely like something I'm always into, and it was really neat. Um, I did not get sick. For any of it, and you played it for like, like over an hour straight. Like I played for like maybe an hour and fifteen minutes, took it off, and then played for like another hour and fifteen minutes. Um, I didn't get motion sickness or anything, uh, but my neck is killing me. Still, like, like it still hurts. It's because like we're because you think it's because you're like moving no, around like, and stuff. It's or? like you you have to do that for like one of the ships with the the visual thing. Like you don't actually have to like move too much with the other one. You could be pretty still, but like I just think like the VR headset like is just heavy and really yeah it's like it's, it like pulls on my neck a little I don't know like it's not heavy it's like the lightest it's I not mean, like the uncomfortable but yeah. it's still like a yeah, giant it's a fucking vibe. thing strapped to you yeah yeah that's true and it's a little bit like when you want to look like left or right you don't want to like go like that right like, yeah like your, your yeah. actual motion because you're worried you, I mean it's on but you're worried you might have to do it so you do use a little muscle to stop yourself from turning faster and like you okay you, know, you clench up your muscles a little bit right, more right, as you're right. trying to move your neck and like keep it supported and keep wonder, yourself supported do you think that's another thing that you might get used to the more you do it and you're like less concerned about that yeah i mean by the time i was like taking off the second time it didn't hurt nearly as bad right. but um because that's, that's my only issue i definitely i found um because we also i know we talked about it a while back we've also thompson and i have used yeah. the vibe yeah and i found the vibe to be very cumbersome I in mean, terms of like it was very heavy in comparison this is way better I, I find the uh, PSVR to be very comfortable yeah um, it's very comfortable for like a VR like for having a giant thing on yeah. your head it's really comfortable right like the padding is like really good it's, it's very supportive bad. and like it's not bad the weight is kind of like rested on your crow like you know the, yeah. the head of your or your forehead or whatever and then like the, the soccer balls kind right of the there. back of yeah. your head yeah it's like right where they're like hit this with the soccer ball you know um so yeah, personally, I found it to be pretty comfortable. The thing that I found the most uh, like physically limiting was like, you know, I have glasses and like I'm able to get it over my glasses pretty easily, but it gets kind of hot in there. And like I had like one yeah. instance where like um, my glasses fogged up a little bit, and I was just like, oh shit! And, like you know, I have to like take them off, yeah. you know, and like kind of like wipe and stuff, and I, that was a little bit difficult. The first time I went in, so to speak. It was, um, my face came out real sweaty. Yeah, I remember you came back, and you pulled it off, and you were just like, I'm back! And you and, I was, and you were just, like, in, like yeah. drenched in sweat. It was like, we had been gone the for, like, at least a half hour. hour. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't really get sweaty, but, like, uh, I did have issue with, like, even breathing out my nose, like, the heat was going up. You know, yeah, like, you really, yeah, you really, yeah, you really shouldn't breathe out of your nose. That's the thing. I, I know. I know, like, that's how you do it. It's just, like, I tend to breathe out of my nose. I know. You know? And, like, but the, the stuff is, like, right along the edge. Yeah. And it's, like... You know, to do it, like, you're going to get... And even breathing out of my mouth, if you, if you, like, are, like, looking down, the heat's going to rise up. Right. You know? And, like, it didn't get, like, foggy or sweaty for me, but, again, you know, it, it was, like, relatively cool. The windows were probably open, so... Yeah. Uh, in the summer or something, that would be a bitch. Yeah. You know, like, I could see a hot day, problem. it's like, damn, that would be really bad. Yeah. So, I don't know. Initial impressions are pretty positive for it, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I know it's, like, right now, it kind of sounds like we're saying a bunch of negative stuff. Yeah, but, it's not negative um, at all. It's... It, it's one of those things Just that like, I was concerned, like, it might be an awesome piece of tech, but does it change the way that, like, games are, are, are better now? You know? Yeah. Like, does I it think, change the way they play? I mean, it's going to change the way they play, but, like, does it make a game better because it's virtual reality? Like, in a lot of cases, the VR almost limits games because, you know, like, you can't do everything you could with just, like... Sure, right. But this is, like, hey, a spaceship game, like, if for that scenario... It definitely makes it's, the game... It's much more interesting. It's, it's an improvement. You know what, like, the first thing I said, like, it felt like being in, like, uh, an arcade, right? You know, when you, yeah. you sit down on one of those, like, Star Wars things or mm-hmm. something, like, it's it's neat to have, like, an arcade cabinet around you, and you have, like, the plastic or whatever, and it's just, like, it's it's cool to have something physically sitting around, right? And when you're in the VR thing for, like, the Eve game, at least, you, like, look to the left, right, and it looks 
like it would be there, you know? Yeah, you I mean, have like a on the couch. All around you. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, man, like I can see myself like put my arm on this. And, I, like, it feels like an arcade cabinet, you know? It's a nice experience. Eve also like I didn't have a super positive experience with it, right. but I would love to like play on a Vive or an Oculus with like a flight sim setup. Right. Yeah. Oh, with like sticks. And with stuff. like sticks and a yeah. throttle. I was really hoping that it would use the two sticks and then it's like use the controller and like because it just like yeah. it felt like a controller. <laughs> no, it did. It, it and that was a that was but... a big part of the motion sickness for me. I think. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. I'd like I'd like you to try it again under like healthier circumstances. Yeah. Like I, I want to see if it makes I sense didn't again. get the motion sickness until Eve. Okay. Mm. And like I think a big part of it was that Eve is I don't want to say a bad experience, but it's certainly a less polished experience than the PS Worlds. You think? think? Really? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if Eve? I totally agree with that. Eve like uh, from what I experienced, like Eve we like continually had to be centering it. Okay. There was that. And I, yeah. And I do just want to preface that because yeah. I, I I don't know and I'm not defending it because I'm not sure. sure. I think that might have been because we were trying to sit down. Because okay. like, remember we we yeah. kind of like had the thing like you need like about six feet to like do VR and we had it originally optimized for us to be standing and playing and then we like transitioned to sitting down and like moving camera and everything. So I don't know. I wonder if that had anything. But to there do was with. a there was a point where like in the second half that I was playing it. Um, Maybe for like the forty minutes when I was done, I'd like I do a mission or something, and there were maybe like ten minutes each, and I noticed like when I did the next mission that like it was it, always starting. My cockpit yeah. was like yeah. here when I centered it. Like now it's like here. It was yeah. always like sliding to the right a little bit. And like, yeah, that I could, could be on Eve, but yeah. and like I didn't get up. Yeah. I didn't do anything. Right, I just sat in one spot. So. And like just things like the the Eve frame where like if you move your head too far, like you're out of frame. Mm. And it's just, like, it was a bunch of little things, I think, that took me out of it. Sure. Like, it really fucking bothers me that your pilot's hands and Eve don't move. Yeah, that is kind of weird. Yeah, because, like, they force you to look at the console for your information. Yeah. And it has, and like, you, it has like, things you actually need to know to play the and game. And no matter what and you're doing, you've got hands like this. Yeah. yeah. But, like, he, he goes, like, like that once in a while. But that's it. It doesn't, like, you know. I, so I wanted to use the sticks because I was thinking, like, tank controls, you know. You have to go like that to go forward, like, you know, right? And I'm... The guy's just chilling. Okay. That is that so is something uh, <laughs> to take it back to PSVR Worlds, which um, those I have to say, like if you are gonna if you're thinking about picking up PSVR, like definitely get the five hundred dollar bundle that comes with the camera and the wands and uh, and the game and That's the game because yeah, and PSVR Worlds has five games and mo they're all really cool. Um, but Odyssey, um, that one like you're in a mech, like I said, and like you see your character's hands. And, like, they're, like, weird, like, alien hands, kind of. It's, like, neat. And, like, she does, like, move them and stuff, like, as you're, like, piloting the back. Oh, that's cool. Which yeah. definitely, like, <clears throat> helps give you that and, like, sense of... Heist has, like, you have to control the hands. You have to, like, reach out and pick stuff up. Right. And, like, when you have the two move controllers, like, you're, like, there's shooting portions where you're, like, going, yeah. like, pop, 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 pop. You know, like, yes. you know. And, like, that's, that's awesome. That definitely gives I, you I that sense I haven't of, had to experience that yet, either. That's one we So like that's the other thing too, is like I'm positive about all this and I've still used just the controller. Right. So I'm like I really wish Spaz was here because he yeah. played uh Until Dawn Rush of Blood. Yeah. And uh if that let's play is amazing. I can't wait to get it up because he literally like you were here, right? Yeah. Was yeah. Here. He was like he was just screaming, like there, it's like you're on a roller coaster and like, you know, there's like all like killer clowns yeah. and stuff coming out at you. And it's like it's like House of the Dead but, like, on a goddamn roller coaster. And I remember the first time he was, like, going up a roller coaster, he was like, oh, my God, I can see the ground. Oh, my God. And then it's just, like, he's going, and it's like, Whoa! and he's just like, oh, oh! Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's so great, man. Oh, so it's it's literally Carnival VR. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's game. very much like Carnival VR. Yeah, totally. Oh, well, at least that level, because each level is different. Oh, okay. Like, the first level was uh, that we played was a carnival, and there was, like, a hospital... So okay. it's, like, all kinds of stuff. Um, but, yeah, so I think, like, to your point earlier, like, they a lot of the best experiences that I've had so far definitely remind me of that, like, arcade kind of, like, I'm sitting in a box that's yeah. on the rails and, right. like, scary stuff is happening or, like, cool things are going by and, you know, like, it's just, I don't know, man. I think we talked about this a little bit about the vibe amongst ourselves, but, like, I'm definitely a believer in VR. 
You know, it's like when I bought or when I pre-ordered PSVR, like I had the expectation that this was going to be like, you know, you know, this is, we're, I'm tip of the spear here. Like yeah. this is like it's something you're gonna use at least. Yeah. Well, it's you know, but it's like it is like early consumer tech, and yeah. like I wasn't expecting a lot, and like some of the experiences definitely exceeded my expectations overall. So it's like I think if you go in with tempered expectations, like you're gonna enjoy VR for the most part. Yeah, because like these launch titles are simple, but like they're they're pretty fun. You know, like I'm I'm a VR skeptic. And I think I'm still a VR skeptic. I'm not, like, a non-believer, but I'm like, yeah. I don't want anything to do with this personally for a few years. Sure. I want to, like, let the kinks get ironed out. Yeah. It's like, I'm not going to say no if you're like, hey, let's shoot a VR, let's play. Right. But I'm not rushing out to buy any, you know, and like stuff anytime soon. I, like, again, this is only our initial impressions. We are going to do a full review. At least I will, because I bought it. Um, but... I will say that, like, I don't think this is something that everyone should buy. You know, like, that's yeah, definitely... I think like, it's for everyone. Like, I think, like, what you're saying is, like, that's a very healthy attitude because, like, I think most people are going to feel that way about it because, like, this is very much a thing, I think, that, like, you know, like I said, tip of the spear. So, like, I bought this knowing that, like, this isn't a, like, premium VR experience. You know, yeah. it's like, this is, like... You know, to take it back to the analog we made earlier, it's like, this is the Pong. You know, like, these are the Gen 1 launch title games. And, like, some of them are real games, and some of them are not. Some of them are these, like, VR experiences. And, like, as someone who is, like, an enthusiast of, like, tech and video games, like, I am excited by that. I'm excited to... I'm excited, too. Same reasons, yeah. Play these tech demos and, like, see, like, the people at Rocksteady be like, well, what is it like to try to tell a story in VR? And, like, you know is that really a video game? You know, like, all yeah. these kinds of things. Like, I like that stuff. So I, like, based on the very, very little time I've spent with it since yesterday, um, I already feel like I've got money well spent as long as they continue to support this device. If stuff still comes out for it in a year, or two years, whatever, I'm going to be happy with this purchase because I'm excited to see new things. And Did you also, things. while you were buying this pre-order Eagle Flight... <laughs> Which I know you're hyped about. I didn't, but I'm so hyped about Eagle Flight. Eagle Flight looks so fun. I don't get why that game needs to be in VR, but, like, okay. Just because, like, it doesn't, though. That's the thing. It's, like, it doesn't necessarily need to be in VR, but, like, a lot of these games don't need to be in VR. But I think that there are definitely, like, to Thompson's point, there are experiences that are accentuated by by VR. And I think a game that's about flying is always going to be more fun in, like, that kind of environment, you know? It's like, if it's a game that's just about, like, flying and, like, tagging people, you know, like, that is a simple kind of thing that I think becomes more exciting by having that, like, vision. And having that, like, physical experience that we were talking about, you know, where it's, like, you get that, like, kind of sense of, like, actually being up high and, you know, stuff like that. And I don't know. Like, okay. I want to I wanna experience flying. So I think, I mean, like, yeah. that's definitely that's a thing right. that, like, a VR experience, you know. Similar to, like, a spaceship thing. Like, a spaceship flight game is not something I'm super excited to do. But, like, in VR, it's a very fresh experience. See, I love spaceship flight games. Like, I put 100 hours into Elite Dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know, the VR, at least in Eve Valkyrie, didn't add a lot for me. Like, it was super cool. You had a bad experience, too, though. Yeah. I get that. It was super cool, but it's not, like... I don't know. It didn't make the game better. It just made VR cool. Sure. I, I, I understand that. Right? Yeah. yeah. I, I honestly think that's where we're at for the most part. You know, like, with these, like, launch games, it's like, there aren't really any experiences here that you couldn't have somewhere else. Some of them are really cool, and some of them are, like, only possible or only interesting because of VR, but some of them are more things like that, where it's, like, trying to take a more traditional game... And, like, like, Riggs is a game like that's like that, which is a game I don't have yet, but it's, like, a mech-fighting game. And, like, that's a game that doesn't need to be in VR at all. I want that. <laughs> but it looks, like, really exciting because of VR. But I think it might be like that. Some, some of the things are going to be that way, though. Okay. You know? Um, at least at this stage. Yeah. Right? No, I respect that. You know? Like, for sure. And there really um, isn't any book on, like, how to write a VR game yet. Right. Like, that's the thing, right? It's, like, this is very much, like, I think, um, analogous to, like, when games made the shift from 2D to 3D. 
You know, which is kind of like these are oh, like God. what makes the experience good. We know it's in VR, but we don't know what makes it better yet. So right, like, we're what gonna have to do two things. Be the Mario sixty four of VR. I don't there think we've seen it yet. Something though. We'll we'll get it. We have, I don't think we've seen it yet. Um, yeah, man, it's like the kind of thing of like you know, to similar to what you're saying, right? I think like you could make a, a case there where it's like, did three dimensions make platforming better in video games? No, it just made it different. Or it made 3D games viable because of this old form of right. play. Okay. I think that's what we're seeing experimentation with here anyway. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I just like, again, I'm still at the stage where I'll stick to my screens and being able to see the surrounding. Yeah, <laughs> man, no, it's like, it's funny because like, I'm, I'm with you. you know, yeah, like, I'm, but I'm still optimistic for this. Yeah, and I definitely am of the opinion that like, I think in 100 years we'll still be playing games that way. You know, like, I don't, I don't think that, like, VR will ever replace traditional games because there are some experiences that don't make sense in VR. You know, you 100 know? years we're going to be reduced to playing checkers with rocks in <laughs> dirt after Skynet wipes out 95% of humanity. I'm well aware. <laughs> don't worry. I mean, Thompson's already preparing, so yeah. we'll, we'll be okay. Will we? Also, will they come for us first because they know Thompson's preparing. That's on the internet now, Pete. You've told Sky Shit. that. The <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh, you're right. Uh, I will say this, though. Uh, if and when the machines rise up against us, I will still be playing video games because I keep all my hardware. Keep all your hardware. See that Game Boy up there? Still works. All I need to do is... What are you going to do when there's no double A's, Pete? We'll find them! We'll steal them! We'll be like in that fucking zombie land instead of looking for like hostess fucking cupcakes or whatever. Uh, like Twinkies. Twinkies, thank you. It's okay. Um, I'm going to be looking for double A batteries. So batteries, have an exp- uh, batteries have an expiration date too, Pete. So we find a battery factory? No. Doesn't work like that. They'll expire in the factory. Can I make batteries no, out of tin foil or something? No. Isn't there a it's way? really hard to make no! batteries. No! All right, wait. Batteries no, are- I got it. Okay, I'm gonna get a solar battery thing. And they I'll just play break Vita. too when they need maintenance, and you could get shocked if you don't do solar correctly. Like mm, you're fucked. No, you're like, okay. Uh, <laughs> yo, storing electricity is a modern marvel. I'm just saying, if in Fallout, so- if they can eat. Canned food like five. They're not supposed to. It's, it's a game. I'm just saying. I don't know. No. <laughs> Listen. No. If my Fallout character could survive being shot in the head by a super mutant, I can do that, right? Right? Yeah. Like totally. <sighs> no. We're all doomed. No. <laughs> no? We're all doomed. Okay. It's anyway, okay. if you can survive being shot in the head by a super mutant, let us know in the comments below. If you like the podcast, so why could, so we can shoot give them us in the a head. like, subscribe. <laughs> no, just so we, like you, we can be impressed, you know? Okay. Yeah. Totally. Um, but yeah, any final thoughts? Um, not really. No, I'm good. Yeah, no, I think I made my piece. We're good. Cool. All right, guys. I'm gonna... Yeah. So if you like the video, like it, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and come back tomorrow for one of our let's plays. And next Monday we'll be back for another episode of Slackcast. Thanks for joining us for episode 23. Right, 23, baby. Wow.